theory part on the waves, it's about seismic waves, if not earthquake waves. Now, we all know how earthquakes are created. Earthquakes are created, we know under earth there are these uh, tectonic plates, okay. So, tectonic plates, they keep moving on top of each other smoothly like this, okay. Sometimes, these tectonic gate plates get stuck like this. Now, imagine this tectonic plate wants to move, but it gets stuck. It gets stuck like this, it, it can't move even though it wants to move. So, at this point, due to friction, a large amount of energy will accumulate. And when this energy is dispersed out of Earth's crust, that is what we call earthquake. We have heard of all these stories about earthquakes, where earthquakes can do a great damage. A great damage means a lot of energy is released. So, that is what happens. I'll repeat. Tectonic plates, they move o above each other. Tectonic plates means these plates we have under the Earth's crust. So, these uh, tectonic plates move above each other. Sometimes, these tectonic plates get stuck. So, their motion is restricted. Due to that, due to friction, a large amount of energy is accumulated. And when that accumulated energy is re released, it is released in the form of earthquakes. That's why earthquakes are dangerous. So, I have uh, written whatever I told a little while ago in my own words. You also can uh, have your own interpretations. This is what happens. Okay, fine. Now, when it comes to seismic waves, there are two major categories. Okay, now let's see what those two major categories are. The major categories are surface waves and body waves. From the adjective itself, you can understand surface waves, uh, they propagate only on the surface of the earth. And body waves, they propagate underneath the surface of the earth, okay. So, surface waves are the most harmful waves because they are the ones who knock over buildings and uh, other architectural, uh, you know, sites, other, you know, mainly buildings because uh, so buildings are erected on the surface of earth. So, surface waves are the most dangerous waves. Body waves are underneath. So, body waves will be affecting buildings which uh, of which the foundations have gone really deep. For example, very large buildings, uh, you know, piles, we, we, we uh, put pile foundation. That means we dig earth for a very deep, uh, uh, very higher depth and then we put the foundation. Those kind of foundations will be affected by body waves because body waves travel underneath earth. Surface waves are categorized into two parts and those surface waves, two surface waves are called uh, love waves. and Rayleigh waves, okay. These are names of the scientists who invented uh, love waves and Rayleigh waves. Uh, I have uh, attached uh, an anim animation about these waves. Now, love waves, they travel like this, like a snake. They travel like this. They travel like this on the earth's surface, okay, like this laterally. That's how they move. And Rayleigh waves, they move like this, like ocean waves. So, Rayleigh waves are a mix of transverse and longitudinal. Love waves are transverse waves, but parallel to earth. They don't do this. They don't, uh, they don't, if, if this is earth, they don't do this, but parallel to earth's surface, they go like this. If you have a look at the animation, you will have get an understanding. Now, we don't have to know much deeper about love waves and Rayleigh waves. Just uh, try to remember, uh, this oscillates laterally. It oscillates laterally, laterally parallel to Earth's surface. That's enough about love waves. And Rayleigh, wa Rayleigh waves are similar to ocean waves. Uh, they are kind of a mixture of uh, transverse waves and longitudinal waves. So, that's enough about uh, the two types of surface waves, the love waves and the Rayleigh waves, okay, that's it. Now, these two are, for body waves are important. You need to know uh, more details about body waves because uh, they will ask about body waves. Uh, when it comes to body waves, there are two types. We call them primary waves and secondary waves. Primary waves, secondary waves. Okay. Uh, instead of primary waves, sometimes they will be using the term P waves. And instead of secondary waves, they will be using the term S waves. Okay, these two are the waves. Right, now, for
for you need to know the properties of these two waves that's very very important uh, the questions will be based on the properties of these two waves so it's very important that you know those properties let's discuss the properties now these are called primary and these are called secondary because these are faster waves and these waves are slow so i will say number one fast faster waves and uh, and this one uh, sorry this one number first property no slow so i use this s and this s to remember the speed slow fast so s for s right and the second one primary waves are longitudinal you have the uh, animation gif you have you can have a look at it primary waves are solid uh, longitudinal waves like this they will be moving like this and s waves or secondary waves are transverse again that also you can remember based on the shape s okay it's like an inverted transverse wave so try to remember that way and uh, the third property when it comes to primary wave they can travel through all three media can travel through all three media so what are the all three media solid uh, liquid and even gas okay uh, even through gas these waves can travel primary waves uh, at a low speed but okay solid liquid and semi solids now for example lava underneath the ground we have lava that is a semi solid all through all that it can travel but secondary waves can travel only through solids travel only uh, through solids again i use this s to remember that okay here yeah, transverse wave means the shape of s no? yeah so slow transverse solid only solid so if you can remember this then you can just have to write the opposite of that no try to remember that uh, in uh, i have seen these questions in essay uh, model papers uh, but in a level these questions were they are ones but uh, it was a comprehensive question all these the information were given you had to read that those information and answer the question so since they have given it some and this is in, uh, mentioned in the syllabus so it's better that you know and i have summarized everything for you uh, uh so this is what you have to know when it comes to um standing sorry seismic waves and now we are going to move i have already drawn a diagram this is an example i found uh, on a paper uh, about a rich richter scale we know richter scale there must be an h there somewhere in the middle richter okay richter so it should be richter you must have heard in news and all whenever there is a earthquake they use this richter scale to compare the severity of the earthquake okay if the richter scale is around 5 that means the it's a mild earthquake but if the richter scale is above 6 that means the earthquake gets dangerous and dangerous okay when it it's when it is 7 or 8 it is catastrophic uh the damage will be uh, very bad good now uh now this is uh, a graph an earthquake detecting sink has detected when an earthquake took place at far place okay now once when there is an earthquake taking place we call that place the epicenter the place where the earthquake takes place we call it epicenter okay epicenter somewhere sometimes it might be you know far inside the ocean or somewhere underneath the earth from epicenter these waves will be propagated waves will be generated and these waves will propagate and reach the detecting center reach the detecting center now from the epicenter two waves will be produced one will be the s wave and the other will be the p wave okay s wave and p wave since p since p waves are faster than s waves they will reach the detecting center first so p wave reaches first s wave will reach uh, in second because s waves are slow you have to keep that in mind and uh, depending on the time interval of their arrival you can find the distance between the epicenter and the detecting center also you can uh, you use the time interval and uh, in mechanics we have done questions like this uh, hope to, hope you can remember they will give you the speed of s wave they will give you the speed of p wave 
uh, normally p wave will be around 5 km per second s wave they will be around 3 km per second then they will give you the time difference between the arrival of each wave the time difference based on that you can find the distance so that distance uh, that's how the distance actually is found okay right how do they know p wave and s wave the arrival time that is this graph okay here yeah, there is nothing suddenly a wave is detected so who will be detected first whoever comes first will be detected first who will reach the detecting center first whoever is fast so this is the arrival point of p wave okay that's the arrival point of p wave and similarly what about this now suddenly it dies and suddenly there is another wave uh, arriving so definitely that has to be s wave so this point is going to be the arrival time of s wave so according to this uh, diagram uh, they had given that the time difference between the arrival of p wave and s wave arrival okay you have to look at the starts arrival and that time difference was given as 24 seconds so that is the first information we need to find the richter scale i'm explaining you how to find a richter scale 24 seconds and then there is uh, th these are waves and we can find the amplitude and in that question uh, they had given the maximum amplitude there are different amplitudes of uh, s wave right uh, out of those the maximum amplitude from the beginning from the starting point maximum amplitude is 23 millimeter a max is 23 millimeter right so we have gathered two information one is the difference between arrival times and other, the other one is the maximum amplitude right and then what we do is we mark those things in the Richter scale. This is the Richter scale. There will be three lines. The middle one is the Richter scale. Okay. And this is for difference be between arrival times. In this case, it was 24. And look at this diagram. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 30 like that. So this is not a normal scale. This is called a log scale. So the gaps will keep on reducing. Now this is the gap for 2. And this is the gap for 2. And this is the gap for 2. And this is the gap for 2. The gap will keep on reducing. It won't be linear. So when I say 24 second, I have to mark that 24 second here because this, this uh, axis represents difference between arrival times. Okay, so 24, where will you mark 24? If this is 10, 20 must have been somewhere here because the gap between the, this 10 and the other 10 must be small somewhere here. Okay, that is 20. This is 20. Uh, that means somewhere, I'll mark it somewhere here. Okay, somewhere here maybe. This is going to be 24 this is the first information we need okay these are rough values at the exam they will give uh, in one year this uh, uh, question came they had given all these information they had explained how to find then you have just find it so to you first you have to mark the uh, difference in arrival times so i have marked it here then you have to mark the maximum amplitude so here again it is not a linear scale this is the scale for maximum amplitude so this is the scale we have and then uh, 23 means uh, somewhere here maybe yeah 23 millimeter i'll mark it here 23 millimeter yes that is the maximum amplitude okay so i have two points this 24 and this 23 those were found from this graph okay the maximum amplitude was given if it, it might not be given they might give you scale so from the scale you have to find it here also they might give scale one two three like that you will have to find it good then what you have to do, it's simple. You have to connect these two dots, straight line. Just connect the straight dots. So this is 24 second, the time, uh, difference in time interval, 23 millimeter, the maximum amplitude. And then you connect those two lines and then that line will intersect the Richter scale at a point. So there you can see the Richter scale is, I'll just say R Richter scale. That is equal to mm, five, this is 5, 5.1, 5.2, 5.3, 5.4, 5.5. Yeah, that's 5.5. Yes, this is 5 okay something like that okay you can figure it out now it's not uh, rocket science you can figure it out this is how you figure out uh, richter scale richter scale is the measure of the severity of earthquake if the richter scale is high the severity of earthquake is high and what are the two information we need to figure out the richter scale the difference in time intervals between the arrivals of p wave and s wave and the maximum amplitude recorded in s wave okay and you get those information from this graph we obtain at the detecting center so this summary is more than enough for you when it comes to seismic waves uh, normally what they do is uh, when they ask questions about uh, earthquake waves they give you a paragraph and based on that paragraph they will ask but since it is mentioned in the syllabus it's better for you to have a an understanding about this this notice uh, more than enough for you
to get a idea.